right, so thank you everyone for joining us this evening. This is our second town hall in our MLR series. And tonight we are privileged to be joined by several distinguished guests who I'll introduce in just a moment. This is a really exciting time uh, and we need all hands on deck. We have a lot of momentum and we are, are really poised to make a huge difference in insurance regulation to ensure that patient dollars are being spent directly on their care. So as you know, um, tonight we'll hear from leaders from the ADA and the MDS about medical loss ratio, which is MLR, question two on the Massachusetts ballot, which is going before voters in Massachusetts this November 8th. So many of you know what it is, but I'm just gonna give a, a quick overview of exactly what's on the ballot. So the MLR sets a minimum percentage, which is a ratio of patient premiums that are collected that must be spent on direct patient care. MLRs were established for medical insurers by the Affordable Care Act. And in Massachusetts, dental insurers are not held to that standard. And in Massachusetts, the medical insurance is held to an 88% standard. So the current referendum would set the MLR for dental plans at 83%, which requires insurers to also refund any excess premiums to their patient customers. It would also require dental benefit providers to disclose projected medical loss ratios for the plans and then file the following year's group product base rates by July. So they basically have to report to the commissioner of the Massachusetts Division of Insurance um, that would say, say what their rates are and then also for the Division of Insurance to approve or disapprove of product rates. So those three things are huge. There are several states that have reporting components. One of them is very new. And then California has been around a little longer, but this is the, the first initiative that would really cover all three of those points. So it's a big deal. And um, before we get into some of the specifics about the ballot and how you can get involved, I'd like to introduce our panel for this evening. We are pleased to be joined this evening by Dr. Richard Rosado, who is our ADA First District Trustee. Mr. Chad Olson, who is the ADA Director of the Department of State Government Affairs. Dr. Carrie DiCepolo, Co-Chair of the MDS Government Affairs Committee. Dr. Andrew Tonelli, Co-Chair of the MDS Government Affairs Committee. And Mr. Brian Montero, MDS Director of Government Affairs and Public Relations. And now it is my honor to introduce a message from the ADA, our first district trustee, Dr. Rich Rosado. Thanks, Dr. Bailey. Uh, good to be with you all tonight. And as you can see, um, uh, Chad Olson will be here also and talk about some of the specifics. I, I just wanted to take a moment and start off with a thank you. I, I wanna be respectful of the 30 minute time. So I wanna thank everything from the initiators of this to now working with folks at all different levels in Massachusetts to have a unified voice. Uh, Dr. Bailey, thank you for being instrumental to helping me do that. That was important to the ADA, um, as I want to take a moment and thank and ask all of you, if you know some of my fellow board members, to reach out and thank them. Uh, there was really good discussion last week. I want to personally thank them publicly uh, for supporting this within my district and within our largest state of Massachusetts. Um, we have an incredible governance team working on this at the ADA. I wanna take a moment and thank Chad and Mike Graham, as well as Perry Hall, who many of you know is, is the consultant working on this. You couldn't ask for somebody sharper, smarter, um, and really understands the process. So I want that to build some confidence. I wanna talk about something that was important to the board uh, when we discussed this, and why did we feel a $5 million investment in this process was very, very important and specific. And it was something that Dr. Bailey alluded to. There have been some states with a reporting bill, but this was really innovative as that this will be the first requirement bill. So difference in the two R's there. We're really excited um, that this could create a playbook for the rest of the country. We're looking forward to November 8th. I personally am hoping this will be a unifying event where, where dentists across this nation looking out for the dental equity of their patients and understand that those words are chosen specifically. Um, when we looked at this as a board, we felt 
we're seeing equity focus within medicine and within dentistry and oral health care. And this is a huge move towards that. Frankly, I'm appalled that the carriers haven't joined us in this effort to provide patients as an oral surgeon that I see every day trying to make decisions of how far can their benefits go to help them receive oral health care that extends the systemic health care. So I'll stop there. I'm excited for November 8th. I hope, I hope dentists across this country will be watching um, for the health care of their patients um, and how oral health care will be increased. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. Thank you so much, Dr. Rosado. And next, I'd like to invite Mr. Chad Olson to say a few words. Hello, everyone, and uh, I thank you uh, for the invitation. I just thought it would be worth giving an update on how your dentists around the country are responding. And um, it's a pleasure to be here again and work, working on this issue the last few years, and in particular, the exciting uh, situation that's taking place in Massachusetts has really, uh, it's been a shot in the arm uh, for all the folks on staff at the ADA. So I, I wanted to let you know that um, we are getting reports uh, from the states around the country of support. Uh, many of them are meeting, uh, one, one in particular, we have a state association that's meeting this evening to discuss a contribution to this effort. I think many states around the country recognize this as a launching off point for uh, similar legislative pushes in their states. And also the ADA saw this as an opportunity to push this at the federal level. Uh, we know that uh, there are many issues around dental insurance and um, it's not all going to be fixed in one fell swoop, but what a great leap forward this could be. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it is, as I said, a shot in the arm and an exciting time. So it's a, been a pleasure as well to work with the MDS team and uh, Dr. Rosado and all the board members that have thought this a worthy project. And um, we're looking forward to the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Dr. Bailey. I'm looking forward to uh, any clarifications or updates that I can provide during this. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Mr. Olson. So where are we now? I just wanna give a very high overview. Um, and I would, I would also like to start by thanking the ADA for their generous contribution. And you all have seen our emails. It was $5 million, which is really amazing. And so with that support, we really have a viable chance to win. And it's, it's been a team effort. I wanna really thank all the individual members in Massachusetts who have contributed on the website. Uh, any amount is going to be great. And if you aren't able to donate, there are other ways that you can get involved. And Dr. Tinelli is going to speak to that. And we also have several of our districts that have donated um, from the executive committees. And so we really, really want to thank everyone for their contributions. The MDS and the ADA have been working together for a long time. Um, and we've developed a campaign strategy called the Massachusetts Dental Care Providers for Better Dental Benefits Committee. And this committee is, is working to educate and engage voters on why they should vote yes on question two. This committee has also developed an MLR ballot measure media toolkit. And this toolkit will provide you with easy resources for you to spread the word about the importance of voting yes on two. And it includes social media templates, email templates, posters, tips, and more information and background about the topic. So the bottom line is that we really need your help. We need your help educating your patients and your friends in the communities. It's exponential. And the strength of MDS and organized dentistry is, is leveraging our grassroots network. And so in my office yesterday and even at school here, you know, just spread the word. We posted the flyers and the operatories and patients are asking about it. And if you see 30 patients a day, and share the message with them. And then they go home and share it with three or four other people. We're gonna be able to spread the word very quickly. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Dr. Tinelli um, who will tell us how we can get involved. Thank you, I'm mute. I'll figure out the Zoom game soon enough. Yeah, did I had to 
stop share. Anyway, uh, I was saying that, uh, first of all, we have to thank the, the ADA for stepping up on this, particularly from Massachusetts dentists, because, and from across the country, people are realizing uh, what uh, an opportunity this is. Uh, have to uh, echo what Dr. Rosado said. We're in a unique opportunity because of some enterprising individuals in the state, and, uh, but we're gonna, it's on all of us to carry this over the line. Uh, so I'm just gonna go through a couple of things, a little bit of background, and then really focus on what we can do uh, to make this happen. Um, the reality is, is we're in a, a pretty good position, um, but not much has really happened yet. And it's still possible that we don't win this. And as far as Massachusetts goes, which is super important to me personally, obviously, and everybody on this call, because we live and work here, is if this were to fail, uh, the likelihood of us getting movement on something like MLR in the future is, is really low. So it's time for us to go that, uh, to you know really work on this, because we're really the only constituency. For the ballot, the biggest constituencies are patients, but there's not going to be a consumer group or a patient group that steps up and really advocates for it. So that leaves us, um, providers, dentists, hygienists, assistants, all of the people who are in our office. Um, you know, so it's going to be us who support it. We have the ADA and the MDS and also folks from around the country that are supporting it and seeing that this is a, is a huge opportunity. We have the Massachusetts Dental Providers for, for Better Dental Benefits, that, which is the, the group that was spun up, as, as um, Meredith mentioned. Who's against it is the insurers, right? They're the big constituency that are, are trying to prevent this. And we have, you know, Delta has already given $5 million to it as well. So we know that there's going to be pushback on this. Um, and we know that they're gonna say that it means that the premiums are gonna increase. Um, they cite an independent study that they paid for. So hard to say how independent was it, it was. And they cherry picked the, the worst outcome from that study in, in their talking points. Just quickly, I wanted to touch on this because they shared with us, if everybody got that email from Delta earlier this summer, they shared with us our their 2019-2021 national uh, medical loss ratio numbers for dental insurers. And so you can see on this screen that in 2019 and 2021, there were plenty of policies that are operating over the threshold. While many were pretty close, and there were some that were very, very disappointing, below 50%. The other question is, where's 2020? You know, there's a reason why they didn't include 2020 in this list is because the medical loss ratios were no doubt extremely low. I know in Massachusetts, we were close for about three months. So there's no accounting for where those monies ended up, whether they were executive compensation, where they were, it's impossible to know. And it's impossible for us to talk specifically about um, what individual companies MLRs are. The one great thing about this ballot initiative were to pass is that we will be able to scrutinize those. It will include transparency and accountability for everybody in Massachusetts, uh, providers, patients, um, and the public just to know that and make sure that dental insurers are working in their benefit and patients are getting good value. As Dr. Bailey mentioned, medical insurers in Massachusetts have had to do it 88% since Romney Care was passed back in 2006. Nationally, um, it's 80% for individual markets and 85% in large group markets for medical insurers. And this just hasn't existed in dental insurers. There's no reason if medical insurers, which are is a much more complicated industry, uh, can operate at such levels that dental insurers cannot. And we know what happens when these pass because the, the medical insurers at the time said there was going to be dramatic changes to the markets, premiums were going to increase, uh, plans were going to leave the markets. And none of those things will materialize. I am very confident that even with this passage, the dental insurers will be able to do well. They'll still have profits, but we'll be able to make sure and protect patients and patients will be able to go out on the dental insurance market and be sure that they are getting good value when they buy a plan. And for me, that's a huge comfort knowing that a patient walking in with dental insurance is getting reasonable value. Here's the biggest part of this. How do we support this going forward in what is the last push towards the voting day. And early voting starts September 29th, which is just over a week away. One is monetarily. Um, we've had a lot of support from the ADA, from other state organizations, from individuals out of state, from individuals in state, but Massachusetts individuals have been lagging a little bit. So I challenge um, you know, people to step up and support this. We really need to kind of push this over the line. There's the QR code. Um, go to the website, educate yourselves. Uh, and the other big way is by our contact with voters. Um, you know, we had a call recently with a, an, an ADA um, campaign manager said, 
you know, yard signs don't vote. But the reality is most people putting out yard signs don't have people coming through their doors all day, every day. And that's what we have as dentists. So uh, things like yard signs are coming. I'll talk about it in, the, in a second. But if we can promote this in the office, it's going to make a material difference. So this week, next week, early next week, talking to staff at meetings and encouraging them to vote too. We expect this to be a low turnout election. There is not a huge government uh, governor race. Um, and so if every person who is invested in dental care as a provider, uh, you know, hygienist, staff members, front desk, assistants, if all of them go to the vote polls, vote uh, um, by mail, vote early, vote on the day of the election, that's going to make a material difference in this campaign. So get your staff members out there, educate them and get them talking to their patients as well. The MDS toolkit is out there. This little card is great. Um, you know, Brian mentioned uh, earlier that you know, on Halloween, we can put these cards in, in, you know, baskets with, with candy, you know, that sort of thing. Think any way you can get this information to a voter's hand is going to make it helpful. The more they see vote yes on two and dentists, we know from polling are very trusted purveyors of this information. You know, any way you can get this information in your patient's hands is great. Office email listservs. Uh, you know, we have the toolkit has language that you guys can use. In our office, we've written an email that we're going to send out over the next couple of weeks that, and we've tailored it to kind of our office culture and in, put it in our office's voice. And that's going to go out to all of our patients in the weeks leading up to this. That's a massive tool that dentists have in order to reach patients. So use that if you have it, and then just talk to patients, you know, just let them know there's a ballot question um, that to make sure that they're going to get good value out of their dental insurance. Sometimes it's as simple as that, you know, vote yes on two. Uh, when they're walking out the door, this is going to make sure you get better value for your dental insurance. Patients are going to trust that. So just do it uh, and just emphasizing value for them. So that toolkit is on the MDS website. Here's the page. The, the link is at the bottom there. I think I've also linked it in the QR code and download that media toolkit, go through it, familiarize yourself with it and use the tools. This is what we have in our office right on the front desk to start the conversation. We have a couple of these sitting out throughout the office. Uh, one of our hygienists put the logo in the operatory. I love this when I walked in and every patient has talked about it that has come through the office. So uh, come through her, her office. And so now we're doing it in every office. These are the things that we can do that insurers cannot do. And this is the way that we push this across the line. Um, this is another piece of information flyer from the toolkit that can be printed out. There will be more things like pamphlets coming. I'm going to talk about that right now. Yard signs, they're coming, they've been ordered. Uh, if you are in Boston, Boston's having a district event tomorrow night where there'll be yard signs and you'll be able to pick them up. A lot of districts are having events right now and they will be there. Watch your email because the information on how to get your hands on these will be coming. Um, there'll be, uh, I just said exactly what came up. Posters uh, that you can hang up in your office, the same thing. I, I believe those are coming in uh, tomorrow or um, the day after. We're going to have some pamphlets for patients and voters. We're going to have hats and pins uh, and stickers. Pins and stickers are great. You put them on the toothbrushes where for people, toothbrush bags when uh, patients are walking out. You put pins on all of your hygienists during the day. This conversation is only going to happen for this one month. So let's do it. Um, there will be a place to order stuff on the website in the coming weeks. So just stay tuned. Watch the email. Read them. Additional town halls will be coming where we'll be giving updates and further information on all of these things. Everything is happening really fast. Um, there will be some radio ads. There potentially could be some television stuff, but that's entirely dependent on us having the means to be able to do that. So there's the QR code to donate. Um, it's time for Massachusetts to dentists to, to step up in every way that we possibly can to push this over the line. There's also going to be get out the vote. We have uh, plans that are being put in place for things like canvassing and phone banking to really just make the the, the final push towards election day. Um, and I think that's it. How do we win? All of those things that we just talked about. Keep your eye on your email. Talk to your patients. Motivate your staff. Educate your staff. If we do all of that stuff, if we get, uh, and the biggest thing right now is I think we have, you know, 30 some odd people on this call, educate your colleagues, tell them to come to one of the town halls next week, tell them to open their email, to look at the toolkit. If they haven't heard about this, tell them how beneficial it's going to be for patients and providers alike. 
it really is a once in a you know it's a it's an incredible opportunity um, that was put out by some really enterprising uh, dentists in Massachusetts, and it's on all of us to kind of push it over the line. So uh, I hope to see people signing up, you know, um, getting in contact with uh, your district dental societies. Your district leaders are all going to be fully educated on this stuff. Reaching out to us, finding ways that you can reach voters, reach patients. If we do that, we'll be really happy campers on November eighth. And thanks everybody for especially for logging on and and you know engaging in this stuff. That's really what we need. There is a lot we can do when we work together and speak together. And dental policy, especially on this type of stuff, is going to be super important, especially for our youngest dentists. Um, and so that's uh, that's why I'm involved. I hope everybody uh, helps us do it. So thanks a lot, everybody. Thank you so much, Dr. Tonelli. And now I'll kick it over to Mr. Brian Montero to wrap us up. Hey, thanks everybody for joining uh, this evening. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping things. Uh, next week, we're gonna be having another webinar um, in observance of Rosh Hashanah, uh, December 28th at 6 30 p.m. Um, so just be on the lookout uh, in your e-news bulletin that comes out weekly and you know, the communications from the MDS. Uh, just make sure you're uh, opening those and reading through them. That's where we're able to speak to you guys and put a lot of uh, important information there that keeps you up to date um, on the campaign and other activities going around, um, going on around the MDS uh, right now. Um, but you know, to echo what uh, what you know, some of my my colleagues on this call have said, uh, you know, what happens here in Massachusetts has reverberations, uh, you know, far beyond our borders. Um, so it's important that you know uh, you motivate your friends, family, your colleagues. Um, and the folks that work for you at the office, uh, it's important that we view dentistry as, as you know, two tracks of services you provide, but also, um, you know, you have to foster a regulatory environment that allows you to provide those services. So it's critical that, um, you know, you, you get involved with the campaign and, and, you know, dedicate some time. It's a, it's a big moment here in Massachusetts. Um, and, you know, it's a unique opportunity for us to strengthen our, our lobby. Um, you know, if we can get a victory here, it, it, it makes our legislative sailing much easier. I'm not saying that we'll necessarily begin passing legislation, but, um, you know, it makes the discussions much more um, serious when we walk in the door. Um, so, you know, let's, uh, let's take these next uh, six weeks um, or so and, and, and give it everything we got. We don't want to have regrets when we wake up on November 9th. Um, so thank you to Dr. Rosado for, uh, for joining the call and, and Dr. Bailey. Dr. Tinelli, uh, Dr. DiCepolo, uh, Chad, um, it's been a pleasure working with the folks at the ADA. I can, I can tell you that, um, you know, when we meet every week uh, to discuss this campaign, um, you know, you can tell uh, the professionals that are in the room um, just from the discussions that are had. Um, so I'm excited about what the future of the campaign holds. You guys are gonna start seeing a lot of activity, uh, mailers coming into your box, uh, you know, uh, TV spots, radio spots. So we're excited about, um, with the future holds for this campaign. So pick up your swag, sign up at the website to volunteer um, and help us get the word out. Uh, and with that said, I wanna you know kick it back to Dr. Bailey for some final words if she has any. Sure, I always have final words. <laughs> but I just wanna thank every single person who's on this call this evening. You all are the reason why we're going to be successful. Um, you know, all of your board of trustees, your regional trustees are all well-educated in this as Dr. Tonelli had mentioned. Please check the website out. Look at the information. If you have any questions, reach out to us. We're happy to speak to you anytime. I know Dr. Tonelli probably has a QR code someplace. He's he'll he'll be happy to show again. But um, but thank you, thank you to, to each and every one of you. And so please watch your emails, as everyone has said. We'll be hosting another one. These are also being recorded. So if you miss them or if you want to share it with your colleagues, they can access these on our MDS website. So so thank you so much again for all the initiatives. There's a QR code. Um, that you all are doing. And we look forward to continuing to work with you. Vote yes on question two. Thanks, everyone.